Nissan's Chief Service Architect and Program Director, Tsugio Nobe. Mr. Nobe, come on out. So I know a lot of people are excited to hear from you today. I mean, I think yeah, cars are, are something that everyone can relate to, uh, particularly here in the United States. And uh, Nissan is, is obviously one of the cutting edge companies in terms of doing automobiles. Uh, yes. The LEAF has got all the buzz uh, here in California as you're starting to roll out sales here in the US. Uh, and Nissan's really known as this customer driven, really innovative uh, automaker. Um, I thought I would start, uh, before we get to talking about open source and Migo, have you just describe in general, what are the challenges that the automotive industry is having today around computing, around auto infotainment? Okay. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the customer's uh, demand has been always changing. And also, the, uh, recently, uh, many devices like smartphones would be used by the general customers and in the daily life. And once the vehicle is now connected to the network, we have to prepare for that. So that we have to implement a quite flexible system inside the vehicle uh, to make connection of the vehicle to the, of the, vehicle to the uh, network. Yes, maybe that is the kind of challenges and uh, changes recently we see. Right, right. Is how, how is the software component of a car changing today? I mean. You know, if you look just back a few years, the smartphone industry has just completely changed, right? From, you know, sort of this feature phone world to a phone where you do all sorts of computing on it. Mm -hmm. yes. Are we seeing a similar change? Yeah, now? of course, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, even the smartphone, or my, uh, mobile phone, those are embedded system in the past. And uh, uh, in the historically, the vehicle IT have been uh, proprietary and embedded systems. But uh, recently, the hardware and software resources have been uh, increasing, increasing or expanded a lot, which is the same with the smartphone. So then, uh, that is kind of changes, and uh, yeah, we have to comply with that. Right, right. Is it, so, you know, like smartphones, are cars now coming with a bigger memory footprint, faster processors, more demand for, you know, consumer services in the car through the infotainment units? I mean, is it, how big is that change for you? Uh, yeah, even uh, uh, for example, the uh, programming code is like, is like a kind of about uh, 5 million lines, so that it's huge, so we have to manage. Uh, if we have a kind of proprietary systems, uh, we make it by ourselves, but if we can comply with the open source systems, we can uh, use uh, kind of modulated software and uh, reuse or uh, define or such kind of things. So, uh, of course, the implementation of the open source uh, community of a software idea, the development technology would be a must to have for the even automobile industry. Yeah, just because the amount of code that you have to create is so big, you got to start somewhere. Uh, of course, uh, the functionality is also expanding. Right. It's not only GPS, but also that we have to have the internet connection and the multimedia players and many things. Of course, the functionality is almost the same as the smartphone. Right, right. Uh, and so, you know, You've clearly chosen to use open source to address that new functionality requirement, that larger footprint of software in the car. I mean, what was that like for Nissan when you first went to your coworkers and said, hey, we, we've got to go with open source in the automotive industry? Were there any challenges? Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, most of the people say that it's ridiculous. It's a kind of foolish thing to uh, have the open source inside a vehicle, maybe because of the safety issue. But uh, of course, we can keep a very good safety if, even if we are using our uh, open source. So that basically the mindset of the developers, even the IT de developers in uh, automobile industries have a very fixed mindset. And it, it's quite analog. I mean, they're, they're thinking about analog things. So the, we, I have to educate or uh, propose and uh, explain how the open source is good. Basically, uh, digital and module standardization, those things are quite important to make a time to market type of introduction of the product. So that, uh, the biggest challenge for me is to change the mindset of the internal company. Right, right. 
And what would you, when you're trying to change that mindset, what would you say is the number one advantage of using something like Nego for a company like Nissan? If I'm, I'm a coworker, what, what do you say here? We have to use open source in Nego because why? Oh, of course, yeah. The most important thing is the time to market. And uh, uh, basically, the, uh, as I said, uh, if we make a proprietary things, uh, we have to do everything by ourselves. Basically, but the, if we can comply to that open source, uh, we can allow, or we can use the many good uh, devices and also sources or modules uh, from outside. And uh, it's expansion or expand, expanded uh, that uh, progress or yes, advantage. Uh, yeah, anyway, good things is always there in outside the vehicle, and we can uh, just use and uh, combine those functionalities to make uh, unique services for the future. And of course, uh, we can make easy connection to the good services out there. And uh, maybe that uh, we can uh, provide the future-proof uh, services if we have a common uh, platform with uh, open source flexibility. It's uh, also easy. yeah. This is what I hear from almost uh, almost everyone is that mm -hmm. you know that time to market advantage, the ability to have these mm -hmm. services very quickly on top of that open source mm -hmm. code is critical. I mean, you focus on the user experience, yes. right, and on yes. providing that yeah. value. Mm -hmm and all the other stuff, you work together with other people to, to create. Yes, yeah, we can focus on the value on the side. Yes. Right, right. And, you know, you guys clearly are participating in the Migo project you're working on uh, within this. When you looked around out there, I mean, you may have looked at proprietary solutions, you may have looked at, uh, you know, all the different uh, open source projects that are out there. Why did you choose Migo as a, as a place to participate? You know, Source. Uh, we believe that uh, the, the direction of the Migo is quite right, and uh, there are several uh, open source projects. And uh, but I, I, I think that uh, Migo is just only the uh, kind of project which certifies the uh, automobile implementation, like uh, in vehicle infotainment. And uh, other than that, I mean, other than Migo, uh, we can have our updatability or uh, backward compatibility or forward compatibility. Uh, uh, protected so that uh, we would like to, we expect Mego will define a very good uh, platform to keep some good compatibility for the backward anyway. So that, uh, that, that I believe that Mego will do that. So that uh, we think that Mego's direction is quite accepted by many automobile companies. Like right. Industry. Right. And you know, clearly, there's a, you know, there's an automotive effort going on, it's very, very focused on the requirements for that industry and sort of borrowing technologies from other sectors in order to benefit you. So it seems like a, a good fit uh, for you.